Hello again, it's Lock Noob. Now, I've had this two-in-one pick for a few months, I've just not got around to reviewing it yet, but as soon as I saw that Lishi had made a set of two-in-one picks for dimple locks, I just had to get one to give us a go. This particular model is for the ISEO R6, and I have an R6 and an R6 Plus here, just to show you um, how it fits into the keyways. And yes, this is a two-in-one pick, much like the two-in-one Lishi tools for pin tumblers, the standard pin tumblers, not the dimple locks. So there are a few features to a two-in-one tool like this. You have, of course, the blade here, which goes inside the lock and allows you to apply torque or turning force using this little fold-away handle. You have the flag, as we mentioned before, which allows you to go along and pick the pins by pressing down on the binding pins. A little knurled tip on that wire, which is quite useful. Then you've got this little guide. So each one of these markings here is where the pins positions are inside the lock. And of course that little uh, pick marker here, which does show you roughly how far you've turned each pin. Now, it does have on here some very, very faint little markings here. So you've got pin position one, two, three, four, five. So that's the pin heights, should I say, indicated there. But I found it's quite difficult to, to read those off accurately, but it's a good indicator as to how deep you're turning each pin in the keyway when you're opening up your lock. So this is designed for the R6 keyway. So that's both the R6 and R6 Plus. You'll see that they are basically identical in terms of their keyways. And therefore, if I pop this down here, you'll see that it fits very comfortably. And the whole thing is aligned and designed specifically for this keyway. So again, you go around the other side as well and put, put this in and it goes all the way in. However, if you've got a super short keyway like that, uh, you may have some problems in getting the blade um, down far enough, but this seems to still work in this one. It does just about go all the way down inside. So um, yeah, it's, I mean, it seems to fit in all the R6s I have at the very least. There does seem to be a lot of resellers of this tool and I'm not entirely sure how many of them are legitimate and how many of them are copies of the Lishi tool. The box that mine came in does have the Lishi tools website address on here, but I don't really think that means anything. Um, it's very, very hard to tell whether this is um, original or a copy. I think though, what we should do is throw the, the uh, standard R6 in a vise, we'll give it a pick, we'll see how it functions, we'll come back and we'll talk about price and uh, my thoughts on the tool. Okay, so I think this setup will give you a really good view of me using the tool. You see the little pin position markings here, the indicator which is a half boon so it can show you the angle roughly which you're turning the tool at. You've got the blade which is used for tensioning, the bow here and the handle which falls back which allow you to provide some torque anti-clockwise or counterclockwise to the lock. If you need to then turn the lock clockwise you'll need a plug spinner. So let's pop this in, pop this in like this. There we go. Now you turn the opposite way to the way you're picking so you can get over the spools. It'll be very difficult to do otherwise. So you can see as I'm applying turning force here, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, as I find a binding pin, which happens to be the first pin, I can't get on top of that pin marker. So I just have to just gently release some pressure, give it a click, and then move on to the next pin. Two, hear that click and it feels solid now. Nothing on three, nothing on four, five. See, I can't get onto five, so release some tension. Get on top of the pin five, increase that torque again. Little click, six is now binding. Nice little click there too. Okay, now four feels like it's binding, so just going to release some tension and go over four. And it feels like to me that one, two, Three is going to be cancer rotation, four set, five. So it's only three that needs to be set now. So um, let's see how this goes. So just keep that tension on. Give it, and then just try to get that cancer rotation just right so that we can pick that last pin. Um, now, hear that click, but we didn't get 
the lock to open. So this is still all locked. That means that I've either overset three or I, another pin has, has jumped up. So let's release a bit of tension like that. And let's see if uh, it wants me to have another go at three. So let's give that a go. And it looks like again, so it looks like a really hard pin to set this one. And we got it this time. So some difficulty on that last um, uh, pin, which is three. It's a very, very deep set pin, and it will easily just either overset or allow some other pins to, um, to, 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 to jump back up into the keyway, which is a little bit frustrating. But honestly, a tool like this takes a lot of the pressure off resetting and going again because it's just so quick. So if you did pick this lock anti-clockwise, you wanted to turn the whole thing clockwise to open the door, then you would need something like a plug spinner. Uh, I'm just going to try this out, pop this into the keyway in the central position, and then we're just going to turn, press this flipper, and hopefully it will uh, turn the lock all the way around. So let's give that a go. There we go. And what we've got is, it looks like it's all locked up, but what's happened is it's been, it's caught itself on the um, uh, uh, driver pins at the bottom, but this is 100% open and is now turning clockwise instead of anti-clockwise, which I think is very cool. So yeah, you would need to get yourself a plug spinner to uh, make sure that you can flip the lock the other way without picking it um, again clockwise. So we picked it anti-clockwise, but we can turn it clockwise, which, you know, it's very useful. So there you go. I mean, as you can see, the tool works very well. I, I actually found it very nice to use. It has really good feedback. A well-made lock like the ISEO R6, uh, you know, if you can still overset pins, you can still underset pins, you can still drop pins back into the keyway um, uh, when you're setting a spool. But even if those things happen, because it's a very quick tool to engage with the binding pins, be able to feel for uh, ones which are binding or giving counter rotation. If you have to reset some of those pins and go back to picking, it, it doesn't feel like a, a drag or a chore. It's it's very intuitive to use. Um, like I said, the feedback's very good. It feels quite robust as well, and it, it works. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of the picking of uh, a dimple lock. Um, it's not a magic key at all by any means. You still need some skills to be able to determine what is set and what is giving that cancer rotation. You still need to be able to balance that cancer rotation and know how to just release a little bit of pressure if you've overset a pin or uh, you want to start to find any uh, pins which have dropped back up into the keyway when you're setting another spool. Sometimes they, they jump up. Um, so you still need a little bit of lock picking knowledge and skill and practice with the tool. Certainly you couldn't just get one, give it to somebody who knows nothing about lock picking and then get them to open the lock but um, certainly it gets you to your uh, lock picking conclusion a whole lot faster more reliably and without any sort of guesswork so I think it's a really really nicely designed little tool any downsides to using a tool like this well um, as opposed to say using a set of dimple flags well there's a couple um, not many downsides but a couple of downsides one is, well, <laughs> one of is, of course, if you are a lock picker as a hobbyist, you, you don't really want to be using these tools. You want to be using dimple flags just because uh, it gives you more experience with those locks, gives you a feel for how all dimple locks pick. And uh, the second thing is these tools aren't very flexible, unlike a set of dimple flags and turners. This blade here is shaped specifically for this keyway, which is great for when you're picking these locks. But say you had a more standard, there's nothing more standard than the dimple lock keyway like this, um, it just won't fit in. So um, it just won't go in at all. And if it did go in, it doesn't mean that the flag uh, position would be right or that this would go in deep enough or go in too deep. Um, I'm not saying there aren't other locks that this could be used in, but in the few that I did check, I couldn't find anywhere this would comfortably work. So unlike dimple flags, these do lack um, a, a lot of flexibility. So I think that when you're using a tool like this, you've got to bear in mind, what do you need it for? I think this is more for uh, 
people who are curious about these tools, hobbyists who just want to mess around with one or two of these tools, and uh, professionals, so locksmiths, who see uh, a certain dimple lock more often. So they have ones for, I think, multi-locks and um, uh, Tessa and Iseo. And there's lots of other models that they, they make these for. So if you were a professional locksmith, certainly this would make sense to have a few of these. They're very small, they fit in a bag. Um, and yeah, like I said, the feedback's good. They're very intuitive to use if you know how to pick a lock. They're, they're pretty good. How much does this cost? Well, um, you can get them for around 25 to 35 pounds, depending on the website that you shop at, uh, which is around 30 to 40 US dollars or thereabouts at the time of filming. Uh, is that good value, I think, for a well-made one? And this seems to be very well made. Yes, if you're going to need a, a little slim pick to shove in your uh, professional kit um, for a lock that you see very often. Um, I can't see why that's a bad investment at all. Uh, even if it, I don't know how reliable these are and robust they are, but it seems to be pretty good to me. Um, but they're not so expensive that you couldn't, you know, replace them if they broke. And there is a range of these picks available. So uh, I think for around that price, that's pretty good value. Um, so yeah, the only thing I can say is I've got no idea which ones are legitimate, which ones are copies, which ones are real lishies and which ones are fakes or or anything in between really. So I think if you do buy one of these, buyer beware. But as a as a tool, um, and I think this is a genuine lishie, it seems to be pretty good. So anyway, look, I'd love to know your thoughts. Those are just mine. Drop your comments below. I do read them all and reply to as many as I can. If you like this video, leave a like. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, then please do consider doing so because it really helps me out. And um, yeah, see you all next time.